Hi guys. Oh, let me get that out of my face. Jeez Louise. I didn't realize it was like in my eyes. Um, so 11 o'clock at night, new time slot. Uh, but that's because we have with us Thomas Van Heer, who's all the way in Sweden, correct? Correct. Yes. Well, Good morning. Welcome to the show, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's 8 a.m. here. It's 11 yeah. o'clock there. So this is our first uh, international show. So you're our first international guest. Well, thank you. It's a great yeah. honor to be here. Awesome. Well, one of the reasons, that we, and, you know, I do two different shows. I, this is our what we call our play testers, where we actually play games. And okay. the postcards from the front one, we just talk mm -hmm. about design and things like that. So at some point, I'd love to have you come on that one to talk about your entry into the postcards from the front. Well, thank you. Yeah, sure. That was a fun one. Yeah. Um, Actually, I can say something very quickly about that right now. Oh, yeah, we can talk about it. I mean, hey, it's uh, Friday night for me, I, and I got a beer, so. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I, I have, it's morning here. It's 8 a.m. here, so I have my coffee, so. Uh, the, uh, just just very quickly on the postcards from the front. Yeah. I don't know if any, if any of you guys have played that, but the game is actually designed based on your personalities. Okay. So if you were to get IDJ together with Ruff, with Tony, and you, and you start to play that game live, the first time, and probably the only time, really, because it's, it's designed around your personalities, Oh, it is a tightly meshed, uh, you'll be stumbling over each other in ways that match how you guys talk and think. And then the game counters are designed also specifically for you. Um, I saw that. I was I was yeah. like, oh my god, that's so cool. So I did that in honor of you guys. Well, so. I, thank you so much. I'll you know what I'll have to do is I'll have to reach out to them and see if we can organize a, a game day and play yeah. your game and and uh, see how that kind of fits with. I've never heard of a game designed around the chits personalities. <laughs> <laughs> As it were. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a lot of fun actually. Um, so very cool. It was fun to do that as well. Um, most all of my games, and, and we should just talk go directly into the sure. other games that I'm designing. All of the games that I design, it's natural for me to do that because all the games that I'm designing and how I'm working is, I don't come up with a game mechanic or game system, and then struggle to fit the scenario and the history into it. Mm -hmm. I research the history, and then based on that history, the game mechanic emerges. That makes sense. So what happened, like with Mag 23, is I thought, you know, coming off of having designed the Tally Ho and published that uh, a couple of months earlier, in those, uh, in those weeks that I was working hard on developing the game for Mag 23, I'm do I've done the research already at that point. I thought, well, I should just use the basis, the basic tally ho system in Mag 23. You know, you launch your planes and you'll cite the Japanese and you know, and, and so on. None of it worked. Hmm. I literally designed that game, set up the playtesting, and literally within 10 minutes, I wadded it up and threw it in the corner and sat back and thought, there is absolutely nothing. In in Guadalcanal, there's one target for the Japanese, Henderson Field. Right. They fly, you know, eight hours uh, to get to Henderson Field. They know exactly where it is. There is no getting lost. There's no comm failures. It's, there are no uh, communications issues from the ground to the air with air control and radar early on. Uh -huh. None of it compares with how England fought the Battle of Britain. Zero. And it makes other, sense when you say that. You don't have a sense uh, with the Japanese. They're not going to turn left or turn right or you know and you're trying to predict where they're going like you do with Tally Ho, because you're not sure what their target's going to be necessarily in Tally Ho. Instead, you know, they're coming straight at you. You know exactly where they are. So you're either going to intercept them close in part way out or like, you know, way the heck out in the distance. And I assume and, you know basically where they're coming from as well. Yeah. It's just a and question, early, of that, I guess. 
early on, you don't really know for sure how many are coming. Where the, the British, you know, they were getting a solid report. You know, there's 80 plus here and 120 plus there, uh -huh. you know, and they're moving these things on the map. They didn't have any of that in Guadalcanal. They had a tent. And they get a phone call from Coast Watchers, which is something you know very, very well as the Coast Watchers story. I'm getting to know well, yes. Yeah, so they get a phone call from the Coast Watchers and they say, you know, at such and such a time, I saw a formation of, you know, 20 Betty bombers go by. Yeah. Okay. The Coast Watchers saw 20. Was there another 20 on the other side of the island? Were there another 20 farther outside? Were there 50? You know, where was the escort? Was there an escort? They, they don't really know. And then they assemble another Coast Watcher calls and you get more and more precision on what might be coming. Right. And then it's only until the deployment of, you know, McDonald. And the radar system, he arrives right away, but the radar system is not offloaded. And when it is offloaded, it's offloaded on the wrong island. And then they have to bring it over. <laughs> and then they set it up. And right away, you know, he's like, there's a, there's a target that direction. And that's what we know about it. That's the only thing he's got. No altitude information. No counts of how many. No types of airplane estimates by, you know. He's got well, nothing. It's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, the SCR-270 radar was was just terrible like that. You know, at Pearl Harbor, they had the same radar set up on the north part of the island. It's what detected the Japanese formations coming in. Mm -hmm. And the radar operators looked at the blip and they called it in. We've got a blip coming in from this direction. And they said, oh, it's probably the B-17s. Right. You know, had it been McDonald, McDonnell, he would not have known at that point because he pioneered the techniques of how to use an SCR-270 radar to figure out how many aircraft of which type, at what altitude, at what speed, and at what heading. All from a radar system that only sent out a signal and got a signal back. That's amazing. And, and he pioneered this whole system. And then after Guadalcanal, of course, he goes back to the United States and trains all the other radar operators who are then deployed all over the Pacific at every island. So mm -hmm. his impact on the course of the war is extraordinary. Oh, totally. And he's, he's one of those rare people that's at the right place at the right time, doing the right things with the right set of skills, the right head, head space, right. You know, mind to think it through and make a difference that literally spelled the difference between winning and losing in Guadalcanal. And it, what's amazing is, as you very accurately said, it's it's not just like it was an accident. He figured this out, but he had the equipment. He was there. Everything you said, just the perfect storm, right? And then that's, I mean, how many times do you have that you can, how do I say this? go through military history and point to one individual that has that type of impact and be able to document it and say, here is the logical progression of what this person did. And you can see the cause and effect, not just on Guadalcanal, but as you said, through the rest of the Pacific and probably at some point, even into Europe, maybe I don't, I'm not sure what they did over there. I don't know as much as you do about the, the history, but I would still think that there was some, some ripple effect to some degree. And it was on ships as well. Um, the, some of these techniques were applied to ships. What What is really fascinating, and, and truly it's a small world, they say, uh -huh. is when I first saw his name, and I'm researching and I'm realizing this guy has done this amazing thing with radar on Guadalcanal. When I first saw his name, I thought, that's a very strange spelling of McDonald. And I knew a McDonald, 19, early 1980s, Lori McDonald, old friend of you know, mine, you know, and and I thought, hmm, same spelling of the name. I mean, but of course she's up in Amherst, Massachusetts, so you know, what are the odds, right? There's probably a, still a dozen McDonalds. Yeah. It was. It turned out to be her father. Oh my God! Not even like uncle, but father. Yeah. Her father. And, and I had no idea where is she, you know, I, but I was able to research and find her. And I, I messaged her. I'm thinking maybe she's got all this stuff and data and everything. 
she had she had no idea what he'd done in the war. Wow. He didn't ever talk about it because it was classified. Oh, okay. It was so highly classified, in fact, that they didn't release any information about it at all uh, to the outside world. He didn't receive, you know, he should have gotten one of the highest medals. He didn't because by the time they got around to uh, to recognizing what had happened in Guadalcanal, it's post-war, they're yeah. still keeping the secrets of radar, you know, as secret as they can from, from the Russians. And it, it was just... He really got bypassed by historians and all the histori histories as well, because the information was classified. So all the official histories gloss over radar. That's interesting. And um, here's this guy who, who basically changed the course of the battle. Yeah, I mean, like I said, how many times can you tie something back to one individual? Right? Yeah, A lot so of times it's it's a group of people, or I mean, there's and, and not to take away anything from what other heroes have done in, in, in history and in, in warfare. There's you know, quite a few documented stories, obviously. I'm actually listening to a book on tape, Stalin's War. And it's really interesting, the relationship. Who was our president at the time? Roosevelt, I believe. That Stalin had almost carte blanche to all of our military secrets. When we were doing the Lynn lease, they allowed... Russians mm -hmm. to come over. They knew how our Norden bomb site worked. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be a big secret, which wasn't kept when it came to what the Russians knew. And a lot of this just recent, recently in the last 30 years or so, because of documents that were released in Russia, talk about kind of the things that the Russians knew about what we were doing because of the Lynn lease and the fact that Roosevelt was trying really, really hard to be stalin's friend and stalin just used it to his mm -hmm. advantage so it's, but i mean that's that's a bit side what we're talking about but it's just a, and if you listen to anything i do you know i go off sidetrack so i apologize well that's not a problem so the you know this game was designed around to a great degree around that whole challenge the big challenge at guadalcanal was sighting and knowing what was coming and then intercepting it and stopping it and unlike the German airplanes, where in the Battle of Britain, if they started to maul a, a Dornier 17 or Heinkel 111 group, the rest of the group would drop their bombs and run back for France. The Japanese were, you know, we would say using the Chinese word gung-ho. They were taking a bunch of hits mm -hmm. and they were driving through all the way to the target no matter what. Now, the Americans did that, too. It's a very interesting thing is that, you know, of course, in the bombing campaigns, 1943, 44, they're losing 5% or more per bombing raid. Now, if you yeah. have to do 25 missions and you're going to, you've got a 5% chance of losing, you know, getting shot down per mission, you're not likely going to make it through those 25, which no. is why the whole story of Memphis Bell is so important. Well, the Japanese, they could get they could get mauled 10, 20 percent of their force and they would continue on to the target very often. It's Sometimes crazy, they would break, but often not. Um, it's that it's that spirit, the Japanese fighting spirit at that time yeah. was so strong. So all of this had to be reflected into the rules. And uh, and that's what we did. So I mean, this is the book, as you know. Yeah, I've got um, my copy sitting right now. Actually, just for those in the crowd. That and the companion logbook. So because this is very much a narrative style game as well, correct? The game is designed that it doesn't even need maps or counters. There's no movement on a map. There's not even area movement. You go through a series of, uh, if you're in a long range interception, you get, to, you get to engage with the enemy a certain number of passes through their formation. Uh -huh. And some of those passes, the enemy fighters will engage with you and some they won't. And if you're in close range interception, it's different, uh, but you get fewer passes before they come to Henderson Field. Okay. And you use less fuel. That's the other big challenge of Guadalcanal was fuel management. And so unlike the Battle of Britain game, where fuel and you know, aircraft supplies and all that is very much abstracted so much so that it's basically off the table. Mm -hmm. uh, in this game, you start with a certain number of aircraft and pilots. 
And as you lose them, you're not getting that many replacements. <laughs> and you have a very limited amount of fuel. And as you use that fuel, you're not getting very much additional fuel shipped in. Supply and logistics is driving this. So you can you can play like heck and win all these, you know, and launching all your aircraft and engaging. And then after a few weeks, suddenly you realize I don't have any fuel left. Yeah, OK. And here comes the next Japanese raid. What am I going to do? I, I can't I don't have enough fuel to put any airplanes into the air. No, that and would just, not be good. Yeah. So you have to think ahead. So weirdly, it's it becomes almost a Euro game in its management of resources as well as a war game in the way it fights combats. Right. Well, you know and, that I'm doing a, a, a day by day playthrough. OK. Right. Starting on the 21st, I'm going to play the 21st. OK. And then the 22nd, the 23rd. And I'm going to see if I can play up until mid or late October when the, the game or their, their deployment ends. Mm -hmm. Seven and a half weeks of okay. war. And it, it's uh, October 11th is the final Okay. Day, the 12th and I, day. What I'm going to do is every week I'm going to do like an after action report. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do my best to kind of make it story driven and I, uh, I'll to the videos and depending on how much energy, it, uh, you know, maybe I'll make it look like an old newsreel if I can. It's going to test my mm -hmm. editing skills. But my biggest fear is that um, I don't make it the full length. I get about halfway through and then I'm done. And I'm like, okay, that wasn't that wasn't the content I wanted. To, I, and I don't want to cheat. So I mean, I'm I'm like that. If I if let's say I last two weeks and then kaput, then I'm done in two weeks. It's gonna so any couple of things this evening. I'm hoping you can show me how to play, right? Because I don't want to get your game wrong. Right. I've read through it, but it's been a month, so it's still okay. Okay, so just assume I know nothing. And then whatever tips you might have, because you had, I, in one of our correspondence, you said, do you want some hints or do you want to learn it the hard way? And, and I'd rather get the hints because I don't want to learn it the hard way when I, I'm doing it <laughs> for content at this point because I haven't done, I didn't take the time I had to, to learn it the hard way. And now I'm up against it like normal. Wait. A usual play session of MAG 23 Guadalcanal is anywhere from five minutes to 15 or 20 minutes. That's perfect. I mean, for a one a day thing, that's perfect. One a day, it's perfect. It's very quick. The campaign game you play every day for seven and a half weeks. You mm -hmm. play this, you know, it's not, you can do that. You don't have to do every day. You're doing it. Basically, you are doing it on the 81st anniversary of the Guadalcanal campaign day yes. by day, which yeah. is extraordinary. I, I, I love the concept and I hope others will join you and play along. Well, I'm going to put it out there. I know I've got a few people that I can use their name for pilots. Zilla Blitz uh, is one, one of my coworkers. Uh, he's actually, because um, I work with, we have staff in India. And so he's very intrigued with what all these war games are and uh, so I, he said he's going to be following along as well. So I'm going to make him a pilot and throw him into the mix. Okay. Um, well, you have, have, you have eight videos to do then. And each of those videos. Eight or nine. Up. I might do an intro and, and, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And say, here's what we're doing, everybody. But again, I may be able to tie that into the first week. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, somewhere yeah. in there. I, I, again, unless I only make it a, a, a month and a half and end up with five videos <laughs> the way the book is arranged uh is is every week you play you have tables yeah i love that by the way and on the lower right side is the history of that week from the actual campaign see i i i mentioned with this when we were off camera but i think you did an amazing job and not just the research but the content of the game is even if you didn't play the game, I would almost recommend this as just a, a bit of the history of this unit's deployment in Guadalcanal, just for reading the, 
<laughs> the stories that, you know, the actual stories that you put in there, the stories about McDonald, all of that, I think, um, adds value. And the game, uh, like I said, I don't have it now, but I will put a link in the description for the video, anybody that's interested in playing. And if you want to play along with me from the 21st on, and that's Monday or Tuesday, whenever that the first day I'm going to play, uh, feel free to do that. But I think it, it's like 30 bucks for the game, something like that. And it's, yeah. th that's a steal. I'm going to tell you the quality of the book itself and the content is just, it's totally worth it. I would have paid double. I'm just saying, okay. don't go back okay. and change the pricing. <laughs> no, I mean, it's uh, the, I can't because the, the top quality paper, top quality color printing, top everything in this book is uh the book is designed it can you can play this campaign over and over and over it will be different nice also unlike a table driven game although it has a lot of tables mm -hmm. this is a very decisive game what matters are the decisions you make far more than what you roll on the tables you have to decide how many of my aircraft am i going to send up to intercept the japanese mm -hmm. at the beginning you you have a few squadrons you can send up a lot of airplanes and intercept a handful of Japanese airplanes and, and you're going to win. But you're using up a lot of fuel in doing that. Right. And, and so early on, I, very often, the common user experience, common gamer experience, I should call it a CGE, common gamer experience, is that they play the first two weeks and they're winning, 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 and suddenly they have no fuel they're running out of pilots, they're running out of airplanes, and the Japanese just start pounding them for the rest. And they stop the game and they go, okay, I totally screwed that up. Let's restart this game. I'm going to do the first two weeks over again and think this time. Because you can always win. You can, you can pretty much destroy any Japanese incoming formation with putting up enough airplanes. The problem is that you only do that a certain number of times before you don't have enough fuel right. to keep going. So you're going to instead have to be thinking about that with every mission. How many planes do I need to defeat the Japanese and make it home, save Henderson Field, and still have enough fuel to do this again tomorrow and next week and next month? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And so you're always just, you're going to be slightly less than what you think you need and hope for the best. Is it ever a good strategy to punt on a day and say, oh. today's not the day? We're just going to take one on the chin or something like that? The weather's bad. Your runway is terrible. Henderson Field was built by the Japanese. It wasn't finished. It's why the timing of the invasion was what it was, was the, the field was within a couple of weeks was ready to be opened by the Japanese. And that would have allowed them to extend an air cover umbrella that would have cut Australia and New Zealand off logistically from right. support. So they had to move quickly. And they just threw everything into the battle. It, it was totally, they'd never done an amphibious landing and, and they'd never, you know, the Marines really learned how to do it. Island invasions were learned at Guadalcanal. Was it? No, okay. Hmm. Uh, That's where they learned how to do it. Correct me if I'm wrong. What? And again, my, I'm, I'm getting back into wargaming about a year and a half, two years now. So I'm still catching up and learning things that I thought I knew and things that I didn't know, but I've got enough for some reason. Uh, I love the story and I've got a number of games on Tarawa. I thought Tarawa was one of the first beach invasions. No, no, Tarawa. No. Comes okay. Yeah. okay. And, and you will find that, um, you know, remember this is 1942. Okay. Oh, Tara's 43. Okay, yeah. We're only months away from Pearl Harbor. We're a month and a half, you know, right. okay, months yeah. after Midway. Okay. There's they're just figuring this out. The Marines are going to be going to uh to an island, and all the pilots are are gung-ho and everything else, and they're literally not 
trained and skilled at the level of you know later american pilots mm -hmm. there there's there's some guys that have been historic marines that are the squadron commanders and flight leaders and a bunch of guys that are just you know new yeah and this is their first deployment and they get to guadalcanal and the only thing that is held on the entire island is this tiny little a few square miles of territory around the runway yes which that much you know, i knew they've just built and the japanese are surrounding them and the only thing that is really stopping the Japanese from overrunning the position is air power. And you think, oh, it's wildcats and zeros and the Betty bombers are coming in. Actually, the most important thing you've got are your bombers, your SBD Dauntlesses, mm -hmm. and this handful of P-400, which is the P-39 Aero Cobra, built yeah. for the British built for the RAF that the RAF rejects. So they have all the equipment is for RAF aircraft. The oxygen systems are for RAF aircraft. They don't have a way, the system is in this, it's in the airplane. Mm -hmm. but they have no way to charge the oxygen system because they don't have the right equipment. Oh my God. So they can't <laughs> fly we don't have high. metrics. <laughs> yeah, they can't fly high enough to engage the Japanese at high altitude with these aircraft. Oh, crazy. And and it has a it has a 20 millimeter hispano suiza cannon higher rate you know if you look up the p39 it has you know a different cannon and but this was built specifically for that p400 on the british recommendation because that's what the british used in their aircraft and so they don't know how to use those guns and they you know they're all the maintenance and they only have a handful of them and yeah they you know 12 sbds and you know five uh, p400s arrive you know a, a week later and these p400s they do the lion's share of the work in ground sport and that comes through in this in this game they are absolutely deadly in strafing japanese positions and dropping bombs on them the wildcats you know what you know of guadalcanal is largely based on the stories of joe foss that is not mag 23 that's the group that relieves them seven and a half weeks later after the heavy lifting is done and some of the lessons have been learned yeah and when they arrive they they are relieving a unit for instance the sbd squadron that was there magnum who's the squadron commander is the only pilot who walks off the field everyone else has been injured or killed He's the last surviving pilot. Even his radio, I mean, gunner in the back of his SPD is wounded uh -huh. and gone. He's the only guy left in his squadron who walks Wow. Out. So it that was must be brutal. hard to deal with. It was absolutely brutal. In seven and a half weeks, you see your entire unit, except yourself, disappear. And the only thing that really saved them was that we kept losing carriers. They were either damaged or sunk in trying to defend against the Japanese Navy off the coast of Guadalcanal. And when a carrier is damaged and it can't recover its airplanes, the planes would go to Guadalcanal. Okay. <laughs> and so they would join on Guadalcanal. And the runway is terrible. The runway is poorly built and it's full of bomb craters and you lose as many airplanes to the runway as you do to the Japanese. I saw... Um maybe it was in your book there was a roster of the actual pilots and kind of kia injured and a number of them had um, accidents on takeoff or yeah. landing but it was just a runway incident accidents on takeoff very common accidents on landing very common and these guys would come in shot up every time. I mean, the, the methodology of engaging the zeros was to attack them and you're going to take a bunch of hits. Now you're landing a damaged wildcat back on Guadalcanal and there isn't a whole lot of spare parts yeah. to rebuild those airplanes. But thankfully, many of them had crashed on takeoff, so they're cannibalizing crashed airplanes. <laughs> you know? So when the weather is bad and it's raining, and you've got, you know, steel plank PSP runway, mm -hmm. and it's slippery. 
and these pilots are not that experienced. They're going right off the runway. They're sliding off to the side from the torque. They are going overrunning. They are landing short in the mud and flipping. They are, it's, it's terrible. Oh, I and, can only imagine. And in the first days they had to cut back a banana grove that was right on the end of the runway because you're taking off into a row of trees. And, no. and like you mentioned, a lot of these pilots are young and inexperienced and are thrown into kind of a, a, a high level advanced environment to learn how to fly. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. And they, I noticed a number of the KIAs had themselves no kills. Right. And the vast I, majority on, in all air forces, in all wars, the vast majority of pilots will fly all their missions and never in, and never shoot down an enemy aircraft. A handful of guys are the true killers. They're the ones that have the ability to hit the enemy. Yeah. And one of the things that we've managed to, to do with modern systems is to even that out a little bit so that every pilot is generally more effective. But we're no longer in an era of dogfights. No. We're not seeing, you know, over over Ukraine today, we're not seeing you know twenty uh, Ukrainian MIGs engaging with twenty you know Russian MIGs. There's nothing like that happens at all. No. You, what you would you say, say that the dogfighting era ended? Was it did it Korea or Vietnam? The the last great dogfight, I believe, should be in the uh, in the first Gulf War. That's when you you see the last great dogfighting in the first nights that there were a handful of dogfights in which war i missed that the first gulf war oh gulf war okay on january 15th 1991 <clears throat> the u.s air force launched the first gulf war um it was seven o'clock eastern time in the united states uh when the first reports uh began to hit the news and, and we actually had engaged the, yeah they the had to start to make sure it, it hit the eight o'clock news right yeah. Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't do it for the news timing. We I know. I'm just being sarcastic. Yeah. And uh, I was actually at that time working in the office of the Secretary of Defense. Uh, oh wow! I was one of the few people who knew the exact times of everything um, that happened. In fact, I my program that I ran was responsible for seventy percent of the targeting of the first night's uh, bombs. Wow. So I, I knew intimately what the strategies were and, and so on. Um, so is I had there going to be a game about that sometime in your future, maybe? Uh, if I do a game about that one, I have to run it through the Department of Defense's general counsel office to get their approval prior to publication. Yeah, I bet. So, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to do that game. Um, <laughs> okay. But, yeah. So, but... I might, but it will take them six months to review, probably. And, and I think you get the idea, you know. I mean, yeah, it's rather yeah, no, no. produce a different game. It. But um, there would probably be nobody better to do some th that particular topic. Which may be the problem. Uh, there are lessons to be learned that are still classified, and I don't know what has been declassified. Oh, yeah. Before. Well, then I, I, so we'll just steer back to uh, Guadalcanal. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's uh, it's just the nature of, of warfare is it changes very quickly. Yeah. But, you know, I think the, the you know, the, we had a lot of dogfighting, not a lot, but we had a handful of, uh, of engagements in the air in the Vietnam War uh -huh. uh, where we engaged with the Vietnamese MiGs and so forth. But it's not a whole lot. Uh, prior to that, you really have a lot going on in the Korean War. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that's... It's hard to say when the last great dogfights were, but certainly you saw them in the in the first Gulf War in the first night. We lost a couple airplanes to to Iraqis. Anyway, we should go on and play the play. Yeah, the game. yeah. Well, like I said, it, for me, it's Friday night. It's a Saturday morning for you, um, and I probably will take your advice on the timing of these things going forward, but. Not tonight. If we take two hours, we take two hours. If we take an hour, whatever the time is, is what it's going to be. M mm -hmm. My goal is to make sure that I can play your game and really showcase it accurately. Maybe not very well played, but at least accurately. Um, and I think you're going to learn the entire system within a couple of games. 
Perfect. It's simple to learn. You I've got this weekend decisive. to get myself ready for the 21st. You have decisive games and you have uh, decisive phases and passive phases in this game. Passive phases, you roll on tables to determine the circumstances that you might be facing. You won't know until you find the Japanese and engage them in the air whether the report you have is accurate. Oh, nice. Okay. And once you get the radar installed and McDonald becomes more and more proficient in applying his techniques, you get more and more information on what's heading your way. By then, you're running low on fuel, so it's kind of a, it can be a funny, funny uh, game in that regard. But the the fact of the matter is, you you have to make decisions in decisive phases, and there's no dice rolling in that. You decide how many F four F Wildcats you're putting up in a combat air patrol or cap. Mm -hmm. You decide whether you're going to engage farther out or closer in. You decide how many of each by aircraft and pilot you're putting up into the air and you go and do the combat and you land. So or you have you, these, or you crash. <laughs> you yeah, you have these decisive phases where you're not rolling at all. And those are the most impactful phases. This is not rolling your way through the book and writing down the results. You don't need to play with the counters. You don't need to play with the maps. Okay. They add a lot visually to the experience. It allows you, it helps you visualize what's happening. You know, you place your F4Fs next to the planes you're attacking and so forth. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to do that. You can just write it down in, in your logbook. And the logbook, which as you say, we have an add-on component book here. Yep. This is, it's about a third, maybe almost a half of it is actual logbooks from Marines in combat. In That's where I got it. It was from the logbook where you had the uh, the tallies. And the rest is blank pages for you to write in. Yep. And among those blank pages, you have pictures inserted, just as if they were your snapshots that are all historic pictures. Many of them are not commonly seen. And drawings of, of interesting things like the chapel, which was yep. used a lot. It's in a tent and so forth. Uh, and so you learn a lot about the rest of the history, which wasn't included in the book, from the log book. Well, so I'll, I'll tell you what I like about this. Uh, let me do it this way. You can probably see that upper third is kind of the, the pages. Then you get into the back is an actual, an account from one of the pilots that was there and it's, it's yeah it's two accounts actually there's okay. there's two different uh accounts um and they're they're word for word just what they typed yeah and it's i mean and the style of the font looks like it's all typewritten so you, i mean you did a good job of allowing us as players to kind of get into the uh, illusion right but in the um, artwork is the actual pilot's artwork of the squadron insignia. Nice, yes. From the unit that he was belonging to. I was a little on the fence as to whether I wanted to get this or not. And then when it came in and I thumbed through it, I was like, oh, no, that was that was a good choice. I'm glad that I picked it up. Well, thank glad, you. Because it's more than just a notebook. It, it's got more oh, yeah. reference, and it's going to help you as you're playing, and you want to learn about this particular unit and that particular seven and a half weeks right mm -hmm. seven and a half weeks um, yeah, time, half this is uh, it's probably going to be some of the best material you're going to find to teach you about what what happened in that time frame so uh, i'm looking forward to doing it and as soon as i saw the that you could play 15 minutes a, a day i went okay i'm gonna have to do this and i've so i've had this for like three months and I've been dying to, to just really play it, but. Well, let's, let's get started on this. Yeah, um, the, if you're familiar with the Tally Ho system, the actual combat of airplanes is very similar. I don't own the Tally Ho. I, this okay. was the first product of years that I picked up. Okay. Great, and then I, I just for those, and I did get this in the mail too. So I'm looking forward to playing this. Okay, Bye. great. I have another one coming out that you'll probably love. It's uh, I'm hoping to get it out within a week or two at the most. I keep saying it's next week, but it's somehow. Well, don't you have a list of like 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, in development and planning, there's a whole half a page yep. of what's going to be coming out. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, um, I'm going to put the videos up. The quality is, is worth it. Uh, if you haven't done book games in general, I've done some of the Worthington. I've got my first Mike Lambeau book and I've got some of Thomas's work. And um, it's definitely the way to go. I'm going to say it's a viable way of getting a, a game and having a fun experience. And these are top quality products as well. So there's Thank my you. quick pitch. Um, there's two things to say to that. First, Mag 23 Guadalcanal is unlike the other two games that I've already released. Mm -hmm. And it will be unlike the third, the fourth, and fifth game as well that are coming. It's because it it's, can be completely written in the books. You take the book with you. And you've got your computer with you, your iPad or whatever, and your writing in the logbook is what gives you your experience. It's where you log gameplay. You log it in the form of a, of a Marine who's sitting in a tent in Guadalcanal in the rain, fighting dysentery, typing away what happened today. And that's how the game unfolds. The others require counters and maps or cards and, and so on, and chits. This simply can be played with a pen and paper and dice and the book. That's how I'm going to play it. Okay, great. So let's. I let's want to be able to tell people, you know, independent of you, yes, I did it exactly how he said you can do it. And this is my experience. This is what, don't do this and do this or whatever I discover. Mm -hmm. so. The most important thing here is the phases of play. What page number is that? This is on page 54 of the book. And you have you have three major stages, which is the pre-flight, then you have flight ops, and then you have post-flight. Okay. The game begins, you've just arrived on Guadalcanal. Everybody flies in, you've got all your squadrons. If you turn ahead in the book to page 68 you will see the deployment roster pilot roster for vmf 232 which is your f4f and you would write your pilot names in the top okay across here sideways or you print these out you can print them out um, you can write them in the book if you want to play it just once or you can print them out and i would just take a photocopy of it to print it all the assets are on board game geek to download okay and you fill in the names of everybody who's your pilots so you've got in the vmf uh in vmf 232 you have 19 pilots and if you don't have names there's even a link in the book which tells you where to go for name generators this is not often that you have 19 friends but you don't have to name all your pilots until you actually use them okay on the next page, on 69, you have VMSB 232, which is the SBD squadron. And that's 12 guys. Okay. That's the only thing that arrives. 19 F4, F4s, Wildcats, fighter planes, and 12 SBD Dauntlesses. That's what's arriving, and that's where you're going to put your pilots. If you're so this is what I start with. Mm -hmm, this is what you start with. Now you'll see the next column over on page 69 is you have here, uh -huh. sorry, here are the P400s. Right. And you'll see okay. the gray tells you what day. So on the 22nd, which is the second day, five P400s from the army will arrive from the 67th fighter squadron, five pilots. So you're going to have to name five more pilots the next day. Okay. The next guys who come are on the 27th of August. You're getting more P 400s coming in. Oh, but it says operational the 28th. So exactly. They arrive that day. They're operational on the 28th. Okay. So on the 28th, you're going to be including them in your list of aircraft that you're, you're running. And so then you're going to be naming an additional nine pilots because nine more airplanes arrive. And then on the 30th, you have another group, VMF 224, 
F4Fs are coming in. And that's because one of the ships, uh, one of the carriers was hit by the Japanese. And so they, they flew the aircraft over to reinforce Guadalcanal and so on. And it goes like that throughout. So all of these pilot rosters, they're timed historically with the correct number of airplanes on the correct days for when they come in. Nice. And you might think, oh, look at this. I'm, ultimately, I've got like 70 airplanes coming in. <laughs> I'll be very surprised if you have more than like 20 operational, you know, <laughs> on most Well, I'm days. thinking that seems like a lot of fuel too. <laughs> yeah. And here, you know, on your fuel tables and your aircraft tables, it shows how many aircraft are coming in and, and so on. And you can record how many are lost on each day okay. and how much fuel yep. you use on each day. And, and you write that down and you're going to burn, like if you run a cap civil uh, combat air patrol, Right. You are going to be flying all day. It's going to use a lot of fuel. If you don't get Coast Watcher reports and you have no cap up, the Japanese come in, they hit you. You've got nobody in the air. You're not intercepting at all. Yeah, you're just going to take it on the chin. You're taking it on the chin. Uh, when you do fly a cap, however, per aircraft flying, you're using two drums of fuel. When you're just flying a close range intercept, you're using one drum of fuel. So, you know, do I fly a cap and use more fuel? Early on, you don't have radar. So you're more likely to end up with Japanese coming in and hitting you. Okay. Without you having anything up to defend. The number of, of wins and losses you win per week determines whether you won or lost that week, which determines overall whether you're winning or losing in the campaign. And there is a set of tables that pertain to all weeks and on this side of it. So as I remember, the wins and losses are, are calculated, you win a day or you lose a day. And then let's say in a week you got seven, you could win four, lose three, you still win the week, I guess, by one. And that goes on to what page is that, sir? This is on page 49. And okay. If you lose the week, you're going down toward Japanese victory. And if you ever hit <laughs> Japanese victory, you have lost the game. All gameplay ends. The field has been overrun by the Japanese. Yeah, then that then so does my my content. So we can't do that. Right. So, you know, very often you get players, they start, you know, and they're moving up, up third week, they're moving up higher. Suddenly they're out of fuel. And you know what? Then week after week and they're, and you they can lose. see the end coming. You can see the end coming and you're, yeah. Down. Okay. And not enough fuel ever gets shipped in. And, you know, you, you lose fuel as well. The Japanese are doing naval bombardment on most, you know, on many evenings and they hit your fuel supplies they hit your bivouac area where your pilots are based they hit your airplanes on the runway they hit the runway mm -hmm. and this can all really affect things so if you have runway damage from the night before and you have bad weather and you have a report of an incoming raid of 20 japanese beddies you have to balance that how many airplanes am i going to lose taking off on a runway that has a bunch of bomb craters in it in the rain or do I just let them come today? Right. I've already lost. I've already won three days of this week. And, right. you know, I only need to win the fourth. And I've got another day after today. I just I'm going to have to fly tomorrow to win that week and so on. Or, or do I just accept that I lost this week? So you have to it becomes a real balancing act and you are in charge of you. So your I'd first mission begins on the first day of week one. I said, I keep saying, let's get started with gameplay, but we don't somehow. So let's just get started. No, no, no. Hey, like I said, I, I want to make sure that I, I, I do this justice. I don't want to spend uh, 11 weeks and then find out I totally misplayed it and should have died in week four. Because that's not going to make anybody happy, myself, and it doesn't show your game off very well. I want to make sure that I do a good job. So, There is a playthrough video on the Historic Wings YouTube channel. I'll check it out this weekend. 
Yep. It's a 30 minute video, so I'm sorry it's a bit long. Uh, no, no, it, no. I'm, I'm the two hour video guy, so half hour okay. for me is no problem. Generally speaking, you're going to find yourself switching between page 54 and page 33 in your first week. Okay. So on page 54, you have the, the phases of operations. Most people just print this page out and they have it on the, on the table and they move a little counter or a wooden block on it so they can yeah. track the phases. Before anything begins, before you roll any dice, you have to decide. It's your first day on the island. The Japanese might come today. Are you going to put up a combat air patrol? You've got 19 Wildcats and pilots. You've got 12 SBD Dauntlesses with pilots. And the Japanese might come by air, land, or sea. Okay, so I want to look at the fuel. I start mm -hmm. with 200. Mm -hmm. And I get 20 by the 23rd. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I'm thinking maybe the first three days I could spend 20 and then I'm back to 200 by the 23rd. That's a good way to think of it. Now, I don't know if that's what 20 gets me, but if I'm looking at this, um, that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to try to budget 20 fuel. And you said doing cap is two? A cap, each aircraft is two. Each aircraft is two. So I don't know... You're going to defeat the Japanese, but you've already used 20 fuel. Yeah, no, I don't want, if I don't need to use, put 10 airplanes. See, I see, here's the thing not having played the game, I don't know what to expect number wise or how the combat works. So, mm -hmm. what I would probably do is uh, day one, I'm going to put up, let's go three aircraft on cap. That's going okay, to before we do that, th we actually missed one thing. Oh, okay. You got to roll for weather. Oh, I don't That's have my dice in front of me. Just a simple D6. And that weather table is phase one weather table. You know, I did everything to be prepared, and I don't have dice with me. Hold <laughs> on. Give me, a give me a second. I've got them around here, obviously. You have dice? That's good. I, you know, I've got a bag of dice. Many of us don't have any dice. I I'm teasing. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and your cat has stepped into the into the camera. Yeah, she's filling yeah. in for me. It's perfect. Love it. And she's even singing the song of her people. Okay, here we go. So, on that point, how many? What's a good number of dice that you're going to need to play this game on a daily? You know, day? I think the minimum dice you can play it with is probably eight. Eight D six. Okay, I, I just grab. Um, I like four. I like to have like uh, thirty D six of three or four different colors. Okay, I'll probably have it, but for not tonight, I've got four. I grab. I can grab them okay. all, but, but that's only for combat that you need that. Okay. So roll a D six and consult the weather table, top left of page thirty three. See what the weather looks like. Okay, let's go back to thirty three. Okay, very first top left, a one. Light rain, yeah, minus light two. Rain. Hmm. Minus two weather modifier, which applies to the phase two table of the mission type. Okay. So you're less likely to see an air mission coming in. More, Much more likely, about half the time, it's going to be the Japanese on land making some kind of move. Okay. So your combat air patrol might be putting SBD Dauntlesses up, flying around the field, not Wildcats to intercept Japanese. Okay, so that will planes. make it – okay, now my cat wants attention. Just come on. Mm -hmm. Oh, because she saw the dice. <laughs> she wants to play with the dice. One at a time, you can knock them off the table. It's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> – So you would write in your logbook already. You would write in 21 August. If you're playing the actual day, you yeah. can play it on the 21st, play it on the 21st, but yeah. it's the practice game. So write on a piece of paper, 21st yep. of August, the day dawns with light rain. 
our first day on Guadalcanal. Embellish it as much as you wish. Well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some notes and I'm actually going to run it through GPT chat. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I think you're going to find it's much easier and quicker to just as probably, as you, probably. You know, write it out. So, you know, you might say, you know, the, in the operations tent, the, you know, commander said that with the rain, it's not as likely that the Japanese are going to come by air. So let's think about, you know, probably they're going to attack by the, you know, on land today because, yeah, but it's a 50-50. They might come by air. So do we put up a couple of wildcats? You have to schedule elements, which is pairs of airplanes. Okay. You always fly in pairs. That's an American tradition. Okay. My elder cat just showed up. Great. Now I've got two. <laughs> two Siamese. Yes. Steel point, I think, yeah. The older one is obviously she's a bit of a half breed with the, the white markings, but my my sixteen year old is pretty much pure steel point. But wow. Sixteen, yeah. The Siamese live a long time. It's yeah, wonderful. I had one last nineteen. She's you, know, you I don't know if you can tell on the thing, but she's starting to get a little frail. So yeah. But apparently she wants some attention too. Okay, let's <laughs> focus on this. Okay, so you've got a rainy day. You have to assign an element. Day. Normally you'd fly elements or flights. So So let me ask you, know. you a question. You say I, I fly an element which is two aircraft, mm -hmm. and each aircraft is going to take two barrels of fuel. So an element is going to cost me four, correct? As a as a combat air patrol, yes. Okay. So then that would be eight if I put two elements up. So let me put two elements up. Okay, did you want to do one of Wildcats and one of SBDs or just all SBDs? Or, or I'm going to do all SBDs. Okay. Now, if they catch me flat-footed, they catch me. All right, write it down on paper. Light yep. rain, August 21st, light rain. You know, four elements of SBDs on cap. And you'd normally list the pilot names right here and now of those first four guys. Could I go so far as to number the aircraft? No. Or is that over the, over the top? It's over the top in this game. Okay. It won't be in the next game that I'm doing, by the way. <laughs> uh, which is a totally different scenario. That's, uh, that's uh, Thunderbolts over Normandy. Oh, um, well, I'm all, I, I told you, I bought this. I've been dying to play it. I've just had so many other little things, and I said, that's why I reached out to you so we could do that this weekend because I wanted to, like I said, do a good job. Okay. okay, so I've got August 21st, light rain, two elements on cap, SVDs. Okay. Now we go on to determine the mission type. So roll you mean the Japanese. I'm sorry, roll 1D6. Sorry, 1D6, and you add that weather modifier. Um, so, did you roll a, you rolled a, uh, I rolled a three with a so minus three, two gives me a land mission. Week one, a three with a minus two gives you yeah one or less on the table, which is a land mission. So you were right. The Japanese are attacking on the ground. The next thing you're going to do, if you look at your combat phases, let me ask you a question. Um, SPDs would be good for a sea mission as well, I would imagine. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, when I looked at that with the minus two, basically I've got to roll a six to get an air mission. Everything else is pretty much going to be SPD territory. That was kind of what I was thinking. So yep. that's why I didn't – I went SPD. Exactly. Okay. Your next your next challenge is, is your Coast Watcher and Marine Scout reports. Okay. Well, this is, not a, this is not an air mission coming down the slot toward Guadalcanal. This is a land mission, so it's Marine Scouts, which uses the green table on the right side. Okay. And this is on phase three. three. You got it. So you're going to roll. There are five different Marine Scout reports, from north, south, east, west, and the 1st Marine Division Scouts on Guadalcanal. And for each, you roll separately 1d6. Okay. This is your passive phase. You're just going to determine what scouting reports you've gotten. Okay, so they're all five listed here. So I just roll on each one of those and write down the result. Yep, and you're applying your sighting mods as well. 
So the minus two is still on this roll. I'm sorry, I've said that incorrectly. Um, you are determining the, the inputs. You are determining your mods for whether your whether your report is going to be accurate or not. Is what you're doing in these tables. Then, so you are rolling just simply a d6 for each. Okay, so a two, and the weather modifier is used here. The weather modifier, I, I now I'm trying to remember because I went back and forth on this in the game design. Um, I don't believe that the weather modifier works. I'll look that back up for you here while you go ahead and roll through the other four. Um, because originally I had that, but I, I believe that the weather modifier does not apply was the final decision on that. But let me double check for the simple reason that it it the reports a little bit here. Okay, so I rolled five times, two, six, three, five, five. So that's your order. So you can look on that table. Usually you roll once for each in order. Yeah, okay, so the first one is a two. That mm -hmm. one to four is none. Right. The next one is six, so you've which got is it. South Guadalcanal, and it says five Plus to six. Two. Plus two Gold Ridge, mm -hmm. and I'm not That's putting cool. the weather modifier in at this point. Correct. You're not putting in the weather modifier. Okay. So you've got plus two. I just looked that up to double check. Okay. Then I rolled a three, which is plus two. So you're now plus four on your on your sighting. That's really good. You've got a report also from Alligator Creek. The next two I have five and five, which is west then, is nothing and uh, the marine scouts got a five which is another plus two so i'm at plus six so you're at plus six that's a good number okay early on you have no in phase four no scr 270 radar plots okay your next step in this is to determine the uh reported force so you're going to roll on the land missions, because it's a land mission, which is the yep. green table on phase five. You're rolling a single D6 and the, and I rolled a six. Okay. And so have a, go ahead. So with the six it says undefended, two infantry, one truck. Yep. So this is what your ground target is going to be. You've got a pretty solid marine report, plus six on that die, mm -hmm. of two infantry and a truck. So as a target, I got rolled a six. These up. So I rolled a six, and my plus six is added to that to give me a twelve. Is that no, 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 no? no. Okay. That plus six comes in later. You'll okay. Guess. Okay, got it. Okay, so we've got undefended, two infantry, one truck. Yep. Now we go to our flight ops, right? Stage two. Yep. You have a there wasn't a, a mod on this, but at the beginning there is no mod uh, to it because you have a perimeter status track, which is on that table which goes up and down. Uh, you know, as you go toward American victory or down toward Japanese victory. As you get lower and lower, you're you're on Japan advancing at the start. You have no modifiers. You would apply that to this table. If if you're losing and losing and losing, your die rolls are going to start affecting. You'll get minus one, then minus two on your die rolls. Now you'll notice okay. that minus numbers give you more and more Japanese aircraft coming, more and more ground forces attacking, more and more naval forces coming. If you're losing, oh. it starts to pile on. Yeah, we don't want that. And if you're winning, it starts to become easier. But at okay. the beginning, you're starting with no modifiers. Okay. So the only modifiers applied to this table is is from this perimeter status, which is this track here that's up and down. Sorry. Well, oh, okay. I'm not on that page. The two flags, right. And you don't have any modifiers at the beginning of the game. Okay. So I'm just going to roll 2d6. 
If I rolled a three. You roll one d six, one d six oh. for that table. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you're you're moving on. You're not quite ready to move on yet. Okay. Uh, to, your, to your next. So I, okay. So we did the land mission. Yep. Now you would assign. You you know what's coming. You've got you've got this truck and you've got yeah. You know what's out there supposedly. You've got a pretty high with plus six. It's a pretty high probability that it is that. Okay. You now would assign aircraft to the mission and pilots. Okay. Do you think four SBDs is enough to take out that truck? And I hope they're so. Undefe they're undefended. Yeah. We're going to try it. You, you, all you really need to do is to destroy one truck with four bombs and strafing. And you know what? You're going to win the day. That sounds pretty reasonable, right? Well, I don't know any better yet. It's my first day on the island. Just assign the cap to take it on. You know. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Yeah. So great. You don't. You assign no additional pilots to this mission, and you don't have to use the cap to engage. By the way, okay. you could say, you know what? I'm just going to assign a pair of P400s if you had them, and they're going to strafe the heck out of that, and you leave the cap out of it. Now, would uh, is. And obviously, it's going to cost me more fuel. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have any P400s yet, by the way. No, I don't. But is there any possibility that if I use my cap now, I don't have cap and there's a chance for aircraft to show up? No. So mm -hmm. it's only one. Okay. You're okay. getting no reports from Coast Watchers at all of anything coming in. Okay. So there is a chance, but that's what happens with your sighting modifier that plus six Got there's it. a chance that you would have to re-roll this mission okay that's what i was asking <clears throat> because yeah i didn't want to game the system and go oh i can just send my cat because there's times where i might want to keep that up and then launch other aircraft okay got yeah. it so but in this case we're just going to go ahead and i'm going to try to conserve fuel still still mm -hmm. trying to figure things out it's wet i'm not thinking it's a little cold not quite sharp as I should be. I haven't had no coffee yet. Yep. Yeah, so we're just going to send the cap to deal with this. Each aircraft now has to roll on table in stage two flight ops phase seven takeoff and landing accidents table. Okay. Each aircraft rolls 2d6. Okay. You add that weather mod, which in this case is a minus two. So you're subtracting two from the dice. Okay, so let me roll for four aircraft and write it down, and then we'll come back to the table. Okay, so that's not good. Six. Six becomes a four, which is crash, insignificant damage to the aircraft. One. Now you roll a single die d6. You oh, I was going to roll all four of them first, and then one, one at a time. You roll one at a time. Okay, so. So you've got a crash. Four. Your first airplane off is a crash. And this is on the takeoff or the landing? Mm -hmm. It's on the takeoff. <laughs> okay. God. You assign four aircraft. Your first one rolling down the runway goes off the side of the wet runway and crashes into the ditch. Okay. And then I see that there's a... D6. D6. I rolled a three, which is... No injury to the pilot. So that's good. The aircraft is insignificantly damaged, but it's not going to, it's going to have to be checked over. You can't fly it. You can't put another airplane on. So now you're down to three. Next airplane. Well, let me, okay, just so I understand this. I, I had a four, which says crash AC damaged. I rolled a three and it says two to three is LW. What is LW? Okay. Uh, you rolled a six, the first one. Right. Minus two becomes a four, which is As crash insignificant damage. What am I? What am I? What am I missing? When I'm okay, I'm looking at phase seven. Mm -hmm. You rolled a six on the first die roll, right. right? And then when I look at four, it says crash, AC In damage, right? Yeah, that's okay. So AC is aircraft. Aircraft damaged. How do you know it's insignificant? It says it's in okay. So pulled up your table. So that I can see what you've got on your table somehow. Higher, higher, higher. A four is crash aircraft damaged. Yes. 
Okay, so you have one of those. Okay, that's good. But the different um, version? Yeah, yeah, but that's fine. Um, there was a change like on the beginning, and I actually just realized I have the very first book before it published in my hands. <laughs> okay. Before I made the change. Yeah. So, okay. So you have the correct table. I should be using my digital copy. I have the wrong table in this case. So Fair enough. Um, you've got the published version of the book. Yeah. Um, and so that aircraft, so, so the table says, so I don't know what, uh, I have to pull up my copy. Okay, you? well, no, I can tell you. It says crash, AC damage, and then on a two or a three, and I rolled a three, it mm -hmm. says LW. Light wound. Light wound. So you're going to roll, be your pilot is going to be in service. He's going to be able to stay on the island. Okay. But he's going to be out for a certain number of days. Okay. And there's a light wound table. Remember I said that there's the supporting mission tables on page 49 uh -huh. and 50. And you'll see that there are uh, tables there. Pilot injury. For pilot injury, yes. So I roll a D6. I get a 1. It says insignificant injury. Good. So your pilot will not be down any day. So you just write this down in your logbook. Okay. First plane is crashed, has insignificant damage. The pilot was, you know, got lightly wounded, but insignificant. Um, so now you're down to three airplanes. Go to the next one. This will happen actually very quickly once you get used to the system. Yeah. Roll to six minus two is four is the same thing. Yep. So roll that D6 again. I rolled a one, which is a SW. So now this is a serious wound. Any pilot with a serious wound is going to be medevaced off of Guadalcanal. Okay. So I so just lost you've, just, you've lost one pilot. This is why you, you assign the names of the pilots. So one of those guys is already going home. Yeah, day one. So Can't you, even get off the runway. Out of the four airplanes you've scheduled for your cap, you've already had two of them crash out. Yeah. <laughs> of course I did. Okay, let's go to the third one. <laughs> Oh, God. I rolled a three. Minus two is a crash. Aircraft destroyed, and my pilot could get killed. I rolled a one. I had a pilot killed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so in the rain, morning, first morning, you, you got cursed dice. You had two planes go off the runway. Uh, Two pilots, lightly insignificant injuries. Well, one was a serious injury. One was a light injury. Yeah, one's a light injury. That's right. And and you why you read it down. And then the the third airplane goes off. Now at this point, you could say, as the commander of this, you don't have to take off with that fourth one. You could say, this is not working. Do I really want to just take my one remaining airplane and run it out there to try to destroy a truck, or do I want to say? Today is not working for me. And cancel the rest of this. I'm gonna. I've got one more shot at this. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. I'm tomorrow. I might learn, but today <laughs> I'm going for it. You you have not rolled above a, a six so far. You I have it on two dice. That's crazy. <laughs> two dice. Okay. Well, that's a five, and this one fell off the table, and a one, a six. <laughs> Congratulations on the end of your first day. You've lost the day to the Japanese. And I rolled a one, so I have another serious wound. So you lost, lost three of my four pilots. You lost, well, you didn't lose three of the pilots. You lost two of them are seriously wounded and will be, one of them was killed. One is serious wounded. No, no, and, I have two serious wounds, one light wound and a KIA. Okay. Wow. Okay. This has not been an auspicious beginning for the Marines uh, on Guadalcanal. No, and I've got uh, 11 weeks of this? Hmm. Seven and a half weeks. Seven of this. and a half. I don't know where 11 came from. Um, oh, okay. Well, that's, re that's really fun. Uh, okay, so let's see what's actually coming. On to phase eight. The day hasn't really ended. No. Sighting. Roll 2d6 on the sighting table. Okay, so phase eight. 
Okay, 2d6. 5. Plus 5 plus your plus 6 from your sighting mods is an 11 plus, which is accurate. Okay. So you have two infantry and a truck attacking the front line. And the Marines battle that off, but it's been a losing day. We go into post... We go into How do I know the Marines? About, it, it's just narrative at that point. Yeah, it's narrative at that point. Okay, so now we go to I want the narrative to be. We I can make a story up, but at the end of the day, it's day one is a loss. Yep. Now we go on to. Uh, there's no attacks, no defense. You've got no airplanes up. You have no landings to do because everything crashed on takeoff. Congratulations! <laughs> the first I've ever seen that in all the playtesting that every airplane crashed on takeoff. <laughs> oh man oh. and in phase phase 11 is end of mission assessment i think you lost this one but part of that is um is your you roll a d6 to determine if there's an additional mission that comes up today oh, yeah, no, now i'm gonna roll high mm -hmm. now you're gonna roll low for another mission oh you don't yeah. want another mission trust me i'm gonna me. probably roll a one i rolled a three no additional mission today it's still raining and the Japanese are coming again. Okay, so it's the minus two. Okay. Mm. Wow. Well, so do you want to put up more airplanes? Well, since this is a learning game, and if I'm going to ep epically fail, let's really put something on the record books for you because I might get eight that I can't take off with. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a point of advice. Don't put up another, you can't actually put up another cap. You, you're going to assign aircraft. Right. You have to look at this table, the mission type table with that minus, you know, on the weather and say, you know, the land missions are most likely probably not an air mission. Yeah. Let's, do we put up another four SBDs? I'm going to go two. Two SBDs. Okay. Yeah. So now you'd write that down in your logbook, That's two SBDs, right and you'd write down the names of the new pilots. And you yeah. can just imagine gathering in the tent. Four airplanes crashed off the runway. <laughs> One guy's dead. Two guys are, you know, getting shipped off tomorrow, you know, to Esprit to Santu for medical care and will probably be out of the war because of the injury. And the third guy, you'll be rolling on the light wounds. Let's we'll see how many days he's out. Okay. Uh, and you can oh no, he, he was um it was insignificant, oh, right? It was like That's right. Yeah, he could, could could he technically could go back up today. He could technically go back up today, but actually I think we say no on that because he's a little bit shaken. So you would assign one of the other pilots. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your Marines in the tent and you've just done your briefing and you told them we've you know something else is coming. We don't know exactly what. Um we're going to send two more SBDs up. Let's see if you guys can make it off the runway. <laughs> okay. So let's right. roll. So we're at phase two. You'd write down two airplanes. Now yep. you're going to roll to see what type of mission. You've put up two SBDs. Now it goes quickly. Um, it's a one. So Land mission. Okay. Land mission. Let's roll your Marine scouting reports. Okay. We have a two. Five. Five days old. So that's no scouting report from the Tanakawa River. We have a one, which is nothing. No scouting report. One, from which Old is Ridge. nothing. We have a two, which is nothing. We have nothing a one. Okay, so yeah, I'm just rolling low. I got nothing. Yeah, no scouting reports at all. Well, they said, what's the point? We give you all this information. Can you get off the ground? So you're not, you're, you're now you're scheduling your two SBDs for what might be a land mission. It's a land mission, but I mean, but how many are coming? You have no idea. So you schedule no. your SBDs, you've scheduled two. Now you roll your D6 on your land mission table. See what's coming. Maybe. A two. Critical target. Oh my. It's a critical target. Critically important is a supply dump and defended by two AA. Two AAA guns. Okay. This is going to be interesting because you've got two airplanes. Hopefully, we get into some combat. Okay. Let's see if you can take off with your minus two on the dice.
What are the odds? I rolled a seven. A seven? Shit on your table. Crash. <laughs> no damage. No damage, and the pilot is okay. Man, I'm 0 for 5. Jeez Louise. How okay. the heck? Let's see if we can make it a perfect day of not ticking off. <laughs> a five minus two is a three. Oh my God. A crash. Now, if I roll a one, I've got another pilot KIA. A three. Light wound. Okay. Okay, so, so another you roll on the light wounds table and see how he's how he's doing. Is that on 49? Yep, 49. Where's our light wound? There it is. Pilot injury, table 5.2. I rolled a four. Light injury, light minus one rescue mod. So you've got a light injury here. Okay. So you don't have a rescue to do because your your pilot is crashed out of the runway. Yeah, we can see him. He's like right there. You can see him. <laughs> you guys run over and pull him out of the pull him out of the wreck. Um, and you know the, the injury table is only as it says in the rules is only that pilot rescue is only rolled when you've taken off and you get a hit on the airplane and you've taken an injury and you're kind of you know, muffled. Whatever. Hmm? You're muffled. I don't know if your book is over your microphone. Oh, okay. It probably is. Okay. So that that injury table will affect your pilot rescue. So if you had if you not on a takeoff uh, or landing, but if you had a pilot who's flying a mission out over the sea mm -hmm. and he ends up ditching the plane in the water from damage to the plane, you got to rescue that guy. Yeah. And if he's lightly wounded, he's got a minus one on that table, obviously. Yeah, I don't need any negative modifiers. I'm I'm rolling low enough without him. You, I, I don't know how to even explain this. You've put up six airplanes and you've had six crashes. So yeah. now we have uh, that Japanese uh, supply dump was completely uh, left as it was. The Japanese were able to use it for the rest of the day. We now move on. Lost to the day, though. Back to phase eleven here. Um, you're going I mean, to have a question. I, I lost earlier. Mm -hmm. If I would have won this, would I win the day, or is it? A... It's the number of victory points, which means you would have won this day if you okay. scored more victory points than you lost. Yeah, well, that didn't happen clearly. Okay. That that did not happen oddly so enough. We need to roll. Okay, did not roll a one or a two, a one. I'm not. This day's not ending. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me check on that. Uh, on... <laughs> I, I think you can only get uh, three missions maximum, but let me just double check it. Let's see. The okay. Well, that's good that I am pushing. Only one additional mission per day. So you've already flown your additional mission. We're moving on to, uh, to phase 12. Let's see if you're going to get any disease or infections for the day. Okay. Well, I'm glad I rolled that one already. So this is, won't be a one. It's a two. So no infections. You're early on in the island. You're not going to get very much disease or infections. The longer you're on the island, the more disease and infection you're going to get week by week. Okay. So you're going to have to factoring that into your gameplay thinking. Okay. And, okay. and just for those who don't know, what I'm working with is actually my cat's doing this is unique for the first week, correct? Mm -hmm. And then yep. each week has two new pages that change based on the historical events that actually happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, what you have here is a synopsis of the real world events that happened during this week. Mm -hmm. So and it's your I first day. Yes. Now. Yeah. You, you exactly. didn't, you didn't, you, nobody's caught much disease yet. Well, I, I'm going to read through this, but I don't think it's going to say all of our aircraft crashed on day one. <laughs> I don't think that's a historically accurate. <laughs> that rain is pretty rough stuff. Um, next, you're going to roll phase 13 is artillery, Pistol Pete, as a, they would have an artillery piece. And they, they six. The shell. Now I roll a six. No firing, no hits. So they didn't they didn't fire a couple of random shells toward the runway. Okay. Now, night falls. Washington washing machine Charlie yeah. flies overhead, possibly, and drops a few bombs. Four. 
Not present, no hits. And now we go on to night infiltration, which is very unlikely, but perhaps. Five, none. Now I'm getting the high dice, but I'll take it. I'll take it when I can get it. Are there any bombardment? The Japanese used to pull up offshore all the time in that first week, and with navy ships and bombardment. Five. Four flares on Henderson, one hit, two DD. So you have two destroyers pulled up offshore, and they shelled the heck out of the field for a few hours, and then drove away before morning. So, so what is the one, one hit? One hit. Turn to the turn to that same mission tables page uh, on page forty nine and fifty. And you will see the hits resolution table is table one. You're going to be consulting the hits resolution table a lot in this. Okay. Game. And you roll a d6 to determine what a they five. hit. five. Insignificant damage. Oh, thank Great. goodness. So they just generally shelled the area and didn't hit anything. You lucked um, I, I Luckily, I didn't roll a two because then I would have lost more pilots. <laughs> <laughs> and we go on to phase 17, which is your end of day and pilot MIA. You've got no MIAs to rescue. Okay. And this is where you would determine if you're if if you had wounded pilots, they would be less likely to be rescued and so on. Got it. You know, they're in the water, floating with blood in the water. It doesn't look good. Right you now. Can imagine what that's like. In the well, that's the benefit of actually not getting into the air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've had an auspicious first day of uh, wow. of combat. Let's just pretend. Okay. For a moment, so we can go through some combat. Let's pretend you've got a supply dump, you know, or you want to do the truck and the... Yeah, let's uh, do that. Let's just do that one. Yeah. Let's assume that we, we, we got up. So you, let's say you got one element of SBDs up and you okay. had a truck and the... And the, uh, uh, the, two the truck and you got the two infantry there. So you, you would place you decide okay this element can only attack one of those so do i attack the truck or do i attack the uh the infantry and they have different uh vp values um which is which is listed and uh and you can see that on table 4.2 on that page 49 the truck or supply is two vp and infantry per is one vp so, so you're probably better off going as, which table okay table 4.2 a truck is five infantry would be right. five, yes. oh sorry the truck is two and the infantry there's two would also be two vp right yeah but that's two you're going to need two hits to get those two vp whereas if you hit the truck once you get two vp okay so we'll go after the truck right so you have one element which means you're going to roll you've got an attack die And only one attack die. Now, okay. this is where you'd have to have selected your pilots by name. Some of them are squadron leaders, flight leaders, and they okay. get plus one die and so on. So let's just say that they're two regular pilots. So you yep. get no additional attack die. You're rolling one die. Look on the uh, look on the SBD counter, the game counter, and you will see that it has the attack and defend where the SBD is six one and three three. The oh, three three is your ground attack numbers on the okay. bottom. So you're gonna where are those, what page is the counters on just so I can see them? Page six. Okay, oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my SBDs, there we go. I you need a three one and a three three. Okay. You need a three, four, five, or six to score a hit. And I've got one dice to do it. Mm -hmm. A five, so we got a hit. You hit the truck, it's destroyed. Congratulations, you got two VP. Combat's over. Okay, easy peasy, I like that. Yep. Now let's imagine that instead, totally different scenario, it's an air combat. You've got two elements of F4F Wildcats. Okay. And you're, you've got a flight leader on there uh, leading one of those. So that's two elements plus a flight leader is three attack dice. And the okay. Japanese show up with, let's just say, one element of zeros. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's got a, a, a couple ace. 
I didn't hear what you said. He's got a quintuple ace. Oh, okay. Wow. When you got a 20 kill ace. You've got your four wildcats. You come across two Japanese zeros. One of them is flown by a, uh, you know, two elements of zeros. I'm sorry. I just say four, four elements of, no, two elements of wildcats, one element of zeros. Right. But they've got a quintuple ace. This is four added D6 on their attack. Okay. Plus the one for their element. So every element is getting a single D6 on attack as attack dice. And every ace is getting an additional plus one. It's a quintuple ace, so he gets plus four. So every so five, five kills. Okay. They have every five kills you get an additional attack die. So you're tracking your kills to determine yeah. your combat effectiveness. And you also track them for ground attack kills. So you would write down that guy who scored the truck, you would put a little dot to show that you destroyed a truck. When you get to your fifth truck or infantry or tank or whatever you've destroyed, you're now a ground attack ace. The okay. next time you use that pilot, he gets plus one D6 on his attack dice. So I need to track air kills and ground kills separately. And ground kills separately. Okay. So in this case, you've got four wildcats against two zeros. One of those zero guys is a quintuple ace. So they've got five attack dice. You've only got, you've got a flight leader. You've only got three. So you would roll three dice of one color and five of another color. Oh, now this time I rolled six, six, five. So I rolled 17 with my three dice. Oh no, you're not adding them up. Six, oh. six, five is your wildcats have an air to air of five, three. So they have, they hit on a five or six. Okay. Score a hit, and they get a successful defend on a one, two, or three. Wildcat's a tough bird. It can take a lot of hits and make it home. Okay. You just scored three hits. Yes. That's a heck of a thing. Roll the Japanese for the zero. Yeah, if I can get in the air, I can do okay. Yeah, roll that Japanese zero. Okay. Five of those five, dice. Five, five, two, three. Let me write that down. Five, five, two, three. And the Japanese and a three. zeros are a four slash zero. Now that's a big problem. They, zero is a zero. It doesn't have any armor. You right. score a hit on that baby. It burns up. You just, you scored three hits. You're actually shooting down. If there were three airplanes, you'd shoot down all three. There were only two. You're shooting down both, which means the ace is gone. Nice. You shot down a quintuple ace. But what were his other nice dice rolls? Five, five, three, three, and a two. So he got two two hits on you. Okay. Before that ace went down, he knocked down two of your wildcats. Oh, nice. Okay. So you would remove an element of wildcats. But you you basically what you'd do is you would roll randomly to see which of your pilots was hit. Okay. And then you would roll on that table to determine the his, pilot uh, injury. Yeah, his pilot injury, etc. So okay, so there's you, pilot bailouts. So on got, those two, start with your bailouts. Okay. You got in a dogfight. Yeah, let's roll, roll two dice. A five and a one. So one bailed out, one's KIA. So one guy is killed and the other guy bailed out. Now roll on your 5-2 is pilot injury. A 6, serious injury, minus 2 rescue mod. And then at the end of the day, as in that final assessment, you would be rolling on your pilot rescue table. Remember and that I rolled a 1, which means KIA. So I lost those two pilots. You lost those pilots. But of you shot down won. both zeros, including a quintuple ace. That's okay. So that would be how air combat works. It's very quick. Everything is very quick in this game, the way it plays. So here's, okay. So we're at an hour and a half-ish. Yep. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, tomorrow, I'm going to play before the 21st. Unless there's anything else you need to show me, because I don't want to take up too much of your time. Let me digest this. And if I have any questions, I'll just reach out to you on email. Yeah, that's fine. And we can just deal with that because, like I said, on Monday, wait, what's today? The 18th? For my 18th, it's your 19th. So 19, 20, yeah, Monday is when I'm going to start 
and write everything. And then I'm going to have a week where I'm going to do a video that I'll show the whole AAR. And hopefully I'm going to have some guys actually make it into the AAR. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, the, uh, um, you know, I'm sorry. I, I actually have the pre-production version of the game at my elbow. Um, I didn't buy myself the new version. I should. I've got it digitally, though. But uh, yeah, um, the you know, if you buy the game, you'll find that uh, the book that you buy, there's basically no errata in this book. Uh, it's one of ID Jester's things that he's always talking about is no errata. You buy this book today. You know, I, I look forward to somebody sending me a note and saying, oh, you, you made a mistake on page 17 or something, you know, mm -hmm. and then I'll correct it. Um, and, and publish a little errata sheet, but there's no errata sheet or anything on this book. And, most and that's of the, the other nice thing about um, these PDF games, mm -hmm. PDF, excuse me. Amazon. G G yeah. You is can change them. If you're buying the latest version, and I'm, I think I can say this safely, you're going to be on top of it and make sure that any errata is going to get uploaded within a day or two, I would imagine. Yep. Yep, exactly. Um, and then it takes Amazon. My experience has been about a day and mm -hmm. then that goes into production. So if yep. you find it an errata within two to three days and you buy it after that, you're going to have that in your copy of the game. You're not going to worry about it. And if you have an yep. older one, eh, you have to deal with an errata, but it's, it's the best of the, the possibilities as you can get right with buy new, buy another copy. That's, that's my idea. Yeah, well, the fact, fact of the matter is there weren't any significant errata in this game, actually in any of the games, where there's like some show-stopping errata. Right. The only errata things that people have found have been like in an example of use on the table, the, uh, the, it says, you know, a five is, uh, is uh -huh. aircraft destroyed versus aircraft insignificantly damaged or whatever. I just, I somehow didn't correct that. Uh, missed it when I updated and changed the tables after gameplay balancing. As I say, this one is the pre-production version, right? Yeah. And the gameplay balancing had to be done. And, uh, and so that it balances out very well to make it quite challenging and quite realistic at the same well, time. Well, mine was on May 1st, 2023. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't real. understand how Amazon does this, not that this is part of the game, but... Um, they contract with local printers and my local printer happens to be in Las Vegas. Not that that mm -hmm. means anything, but uh, if you're buying something, one of these games, one of the nice, one of the additional nice things is the shipping of these types of book games is very reasonable because you're not paying for a ton of, it's and a Amazon book. a lot of times will do it for free, right? Yeah, it's a book, so it's very affordable. Um, and if you're a Prime member, because you're watching the TV, you know, Prime TV shows and such yep. that they have, that your shipping is free. Yeah, that's and, what I do. Yeah, so it's 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 wonderful, uh, wonderful system. I am doing boxed versions as add-ons for all of these games. Okay. The box is an add-on box. It's not a standalone game. You buy the book and you buy the box. The book fits into the box and it includes all the game counters and maps and key tables that you would normally print out and have at your elbow. Okay. The box is a very narrow profile, like an inch thick box. Everything fits within and then you would have a boxed version of this game. A lot of people they make their own game counters. You don't need oh, to make. I was already thinking of doing some three D printing of little airplanes just because I want to. Absolutely. <laughs> that... Of course, mine wouldn't be on stands. I can't get them off the ground. But outside of that, oh, oh, oh for you... six, dude, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm really impressed by that because I think you needed any anything greater than a seven on two D six. Yeah. <laughs> to have a fine takeoff and be engaged. And you manage six times in a row to basically roll seven six or less. Six. Yeah. Um, with your minus two, it becomes, yeah. So you had a lot of problems. I did. You guys, you guys need to have a meeting tonight. Yeah, um, I'm going to be, you know what? They're going to be a little, they're going to look at the weather and go, it's raining, uh, boss. I don't feel, I, I'm, I'm not feeling it today. I don't know if I can go up. <laughs> Well, they're not very experienced pilots. You know, the bulk of them are oh, really no. not. Yeah, yeah, apparently. 
And I'm just like, no, no, go for it. Go for it. We, we can do this. So, so imagine early on with this game, you are, you, and, and, you know, the fact of the matter is the runway is terrible at Henderson Field. It was, it was an absolute disaster of a runway. And people don't talk about that in history. By the time, they, the history that they study is the Joe Foss history. Right. He wrote his book. He's coming, you know, seven and a half weeks after the fact. The runway has finally been improved. There's enough fuel in place. They've understood the tactics of how to ja engage the Japanese. They get a full debrief from the handful of two or three guys still left standing who are defending the island on, you know, what to do. And they got the radar now. They've got the radar. They know what's going on. Great situational awareness. And they take off and they all become aces. That's the story we know about Guadalcanal. <laughs> The story of Mag, that's that's the popular history of it. This, the real story of Guadalcanal is Mag 23. They got nothing. They're new in theater. They don't know what's coming. They get whacked by Japanese artillery and naval gunfire every night. They keep taking attacks and dysentery sets in. And, you know, they're just losing the whole thing. And by the time seven and a half weeks is over, less than two months, a handful of guys walk off that's the island. And the attrition on that is just well when you when you understand everything that you put into this game that illustrates that it's not a surprise yeah. it's not a surprise the uh, game teaches you the real history it really does. well i i am super excited to play this uh I, like i said when i saw this my first thought was i need to do this day by day i can find 15 20 minutes i got a busy schedule but i can do this and write this stuff down. It's solo. It's good content for my channel. I'm going to have a blast doing it. And um, and then the fact is, you know, when I got this, I didn't make the connection that you had done an entry in the postcards from the front, right? And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, hold on. That name's familiar to me. So, yeah, and like I said, we'll have you on uh, on that other show to talk about that and we can get into that a little bit and I'll, I'll reach out to Jester and see if we can maybe set something up to get a four way gameplay of that. Yeah. Th this, the, the rules take a little bit of while, a few plays throughs to get the rules in order and to understand <laughs> yes. everything. And then you're going to find that you're playing through a mission in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh yeah. Uh, and then once I kind of get used to the, the, what's going on. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll, I'll get some strategy because keep in mind, I'm motivated to not try to do this five or six times to figure it out. I've got one shot, kind of mm -hmm. like they did, because mm -hmm. I'm doing it based on the historical calendar. So that's a metagaming thing, but I've got that where you, you know, I'm not gonna yeah. be started. If I if I fail in three weeks or whatever, make it halfway through, then that's where I'm at. Not that I won't play it again. It's just like that's gonna be where the content goes. So I'm gonna that's gonna add a little drama, hopefully, to these AARs and yeah, I, I would say there's there's two log books really that you should do the mm -hmm. way you're doing this game. The log book is you tracking all the gameplay. You're writing down the names of the pilots and yeah. each one, what happened to each one on takeoff in your case. Um, and, you know, then he was killed and he's going to be sent back to your spirit to Santu and so on. And, and you write that up. And there's examples of how to write that log book up for gameplay. Mm hmm. But then in your case, you might want to do it where the day you distill that down to a single paragraph. And all you're going to say is, it's our first day on Guadalcanal, August 21st, 1942. The rain is hit and we get advisories that there may be a Japanese ground movement on the yeah. perimeter. So we decide to put up four aircraft. And on a, on a combat air patrol, and all four crashed on takeoff. One pilot is killed, two are seriously injured, and one guy received a light, insignificant wound. It's been a very bad day. Then we get a report of additional Japanese ground movement, and we decide to launch two more aircraft. Sadly, both crashed on takeoff. An yeah. inauspicious start for the Marines on Guadalcanal. Hopefully tomorrow will go on a better day, you know? Yeah. And that's your day's report. And then you're going to do the next day. And yeah. so you're, you could do a 10-minute quick video 
Well, see, I wasn't sure if I should do, and, and I may adjust, but because of work schedule uh, and things like that, I didn't want to have to put out a video every single day. Yeah. So I thought, let me do an AAR for the week. If this, after playing a couple of days, if this turns into something that I can do uh, a five minute video every day, I may adjust and do it, especially as we get deep, assuming that I can actually get off the ground and we survive and we start getting closer to the end. Mm -hmm. um, I think a daily update might draw a little more interest. You know, we start off yeah. with a week and a week and all of a sudden, no, oh, starting to get interesting. And, you know, this we might actually make this. Let's 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 dial this in a little more focused on a, maybe a daily update. And you may find that you do a, uh, you may instead, as an alternative here, you may do your weekly AAR. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, on, on a Wednesday, you decide, I'm just going to play a mission live. And that may be a five minute video because this mission, once you're familiar with this game, you would have literally rolled through all of these crashes and everything in five minutes. And yeah. your video is done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a five minute day. It yeah. took us an hour and a half to get to there. No, but, no, no. I, no dude, content. this is awesome. This is awesome. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad I got the logbook. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to write in this book because I'm doing it, and I want to keep track of how far mm -hmm. I make. I don't have a, a couple of things. One, I, I don't, I don't mind supporting people like you. That you know, we're small. Every Every little bit matters, right? It truly does. Um, but this would be my permanent record of this particular thing with the content and all that. So I may just write in this book and then buy another one um, that I can, you know, get all the components and do whatever I want to with. But then I'll always have my original that ties back into the videos because I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm a geek like that. Yeah. And if I was in your shoes, I would go onto the board game geek, mm -hmm. download the assets and print them out, at least in black and white. Yeah. Um, this game, like all of my games, is also uh, designed for colorblind uh, players. Okay. So everything works in black and white um, nice. as well as color. If you can print them in color, it's beautiful. But print out the key assets. You don't have to print out the game counters and so on, but some, you know, print out the tables for the day. Yeah. Uh, See yeah, now, I, I don't have a printer. Okay. Long you know, story I, short, I have the photo printer. Copy. I have. Photo you know, copy. I can, I'll go down to Kinkos or whatever, and I can get I can get the PDFs and go get something printed. Um, mm -hmm. But I would I'll, photocopy this page forty nine and fifty. Yeah. Have that at your elbow. And I would photocopy your pilot rosters and your fuel. Uh, you know, your, your aircraft uh, and deployment calendar, I should say. Your pilot roster and deployment calendars. Photocopy those out and photocopy yeah. the page 49 and uh, 50. Yep. And on the actual gameplay then, you can just use the book open to this page and leave it open to this page. Yeah. And you might want to photocopy out as well each of the combat the three combat phases, the phases and the air, land, and sea combat. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it this weekend to get mm -hmm. myself prepared. <clears throat> and so I'll go as far as I can. And then whatever I think I need, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i just go down. I'll yeah. pull it off of uh, BGG and I can go down and get it printed. If you if you have the pilot roster and the air the deployment calendar on paper mm -hmm. beside you, it'll save you a lot of flipping back and forth in the book. Yeah. If you have the stages in front of you, uh, that that page uh, fifty four, this one, it will keep you on track for playing the game. So have that one printed out as well. Okay. And the only other thing really is going to be this 49 and 50, because these tables are for all weeks. 
Okay. So all the time, you're going to be going back and forth, flipping between 49 and, and whatever week you're on otherwise. Yeah. And that's just not, it, it's doable. You can certainly do it and play. It's just in the book, flipping back right. and forth. I usually put in, I've done that many times, and I put in uh, bookmarks on the key pages. Oh, yeah. So that I can flip to them quickly. Um, and, yeah, and post-it the notes were great for that. Yeah, the key pages that I'm always flipping back and forth to are this 49.50, this 49.50. Well, you know, the, but here's the thing, uh, to be to be completely honest, I may do it without printing anything out just so that I can comment on the fact that you don't have to print anything out. Right. And flipping pages for me is not a big deal. I mean, I've got all day to, to get a 15-minute. So, so what if it takes me 20 Um I'll just put some sticky notes um, only because I want to be able to say to somebody, I played this straight out of the book. You can do it. You can do that. But I think you're going to find after like your first week of doing it, <laughs> you're going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to print out these supporting tables. Have them at my own. I'm not telling anybody if I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you can play it within the book. It's absolutely true. Yeah. And, um, and you know, like today would have been, had you gotten off any aircraft, Mm -hmm. A pair of SPDs got off and you could attack the supply dumps. Uh, you would have added another three minutes to gameplay. So you would have had, instead of a five minute day where everything is crashed, you would have had an eight minute day and your day mission is completed. Okay. That's what would have been yeah. had you that, known the rules. Dude, and, that is so reasonable to, to sit yeah. down and play a day like that or a week that conquering a campaign even though it's seven and a half weeks is very doable in small pieces. And again, if you're on vacation or you're, you know, you're traveling, you just throw this boom, get to your hotel, play a couple of days. Next trip, you can just continue where you were, right? If you do a lot of business travel. Yep. Um, yep. That's the beauty of these types of, these types of um, games and such. Um, so I do have one question. Go ahead. First mission, let's say I go out and I got the two victory points for destroying the truck. Second mission, I crash. I don't get up in the air. And um, the supply dump, I, I fail that mission. Is that If I fail a mission, is that just minus one victory point? So you lost airplanes. You're losing VPs for your aircraft loss. Oh, okay. So... Okay, so, so in fact, you wouldn't have logged a win just by destroying a single truck uh, because you've lost a bunch of airplanes right? going into the day. So you'd be like minus four on your VPs and you'd be looking at my best upside on this is if I destroy the truck and both infantry guys, I could get plus four. You know what? I'm, I, I'm not going to win today no matter what I do. This is a draw of the day. This is a draw. Right. Today's a draw. So draws are valid. The best I can do is a draw. Okay. Do I really want to fly against, you know, that's the way you'd be thinking. But I still have to land. And then you still have to land. And, and... <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. How Give many aircraft advice. do I have? How many aircraft <clears throat> do I have? So you have 12 SBDs. Yeah, but I mean, like the whole campaign, what's the what's the total going to be? Oh, I, I've never added them up because you never seem to get to full strength. Um, you'll be losing a lot of airplanes throughout. I, the Japanese I, will shoot down some, ground fire will shoot down some, a lot of yeah. crashes, particularly early on. As you go through the weeks, the field gets better and better. The, the CBs are working hard to improve it. Yeah. Um, but in this first week, it's it's the worst possible. I mean, they're just they are just starting to lay down the PFP. Yeah, you've got hard packed coral and it isn't even hard packed. So your planes are dragging wheels through soft spots. And when yeah, it rains, I found every single uh, pothole on the, that runway that there was. Yep. You have really done the job, but that, it was bad. Actually, the first Marine mission that, that they flew, I think they lost a couple of airplanes on that first mission. They only flew four or six airplanes the first day. Uh -huh. And they lost a few on takeoffs and landings. Okay, so I, yeah, I have historically big. accurate uh, or close to experience. Yeah, the, the write-up reads, August 21st, MAG-23 launched its first combat mission. 
four F4 Wildcats from VMF-223 to patrol north of Savo Island. Unexpectedly, they crossed paths with six A6M2 Japanese Zeros. A head-on firing pass resolved into a turning fight. Virtually every Wildcat was shot up badly, and though they made it back, all four planes were written off, two due to landing accidents. Okay. The Japanese right. suffered no losses, though one was claimed. Later, an SBD Dauntless on, on a combat air patrol crashed on takeoff and was destroyed. Okay, so in, in real sure. life, they had three. I just happened to get six. <laughs> they lost three to landing accidents on the first day of okay. their actual deployment. So they you claimed the game plane. is very close to being historically accurate. I'm pretty stunned that you managed to roll so low six times in a row. Um, and then I'll have a day where everything just just works. If you if you roll day after day, and everything is crashing on takeoff, time after time after time, I recommend a ritual dice burning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I I played. Um, a game last weekend where we had a situation that was um, that Richard had to roll. He had like three dice and he had to roll like fives and sixes and he did. And then I had a similar situation where it was highly unlikely that I was going to get it and I rolled like all sixes. And so we had a situation that came up twice, once for him, once for me, that nine times out of ten you're going to fail and that would have ended the game. And both times we each made our roll. Wow. And then today I can't take off. Yeah. No, there's today. no in between with me. It's either all good or all bad. <laughs> this, this is going to be an interesting game for you, I'm sure. I'm, like um, I said, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So just, you know, you can wake up in the morning or before you go to bed at night or in after dinner or in the afternoon or when you come yeah. back from work, whatever it is, you can play a 15 minute game. You know, you can play a major air-to-air -air engagement in 15 minutes once you know these rules. You know, and, and the other thing is maybe my AAR is just a couple of the days I just video and, and show them back to back to back to back. That's a good point. But you're videoing then all of your games, and that might be a little bit rough. Well, no, no. I, the, the videoing part is not going to be difficult. It's the editing and all of that on a daily basis if I get swamped at work and I can squeeze in a gameplay, but I don't have that extra... 30 minutes to make the video and upload it. But if I do that once a week, I can shoot the video and then edit it once. I may be able to do that. And yeah, that I might do that. I might do that. But yeah, and just, just discard all the days that you're not going to do and just take the hot mission of the week. Yeah. <laughs> and show that. <laughs> but the weekly highlights. Yeah, the weekly we highlights. Took off. We had six crashes on the runway. God, I hope yeah, that doesn't happen. Yeah, you don't even have to show all of the dice rolls to get there. You could just show the key parts of the combat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to do my best to make it narrative because people like yeah. story and they like narrative, and especially solo gamers, because that's one of the draws, as you well know, that solo gamers like narrative stories. Um, so you, you might find that you could take the day, write a paragraph or two, distill down your your logbook entries with all the pilot assignments you just write out the the summary of what happened at the end mm -hmm. and write that into your the logbook uh, that summary and publish that summary on your facebook group i don't have a facebook group well you should get one or just do it and tack up but, yeah, I you know maybe I, I haven't i i there are so many different social outlets um the one that i outside of um youtube uh, i'm actually on twitter more often than anything or x whatever you want to call it but um i think yeah, that's an ideal platform for it you know um today's mission guadalcanal lost six airplanes on takeoff well if i can do it in under a minute i can post those as shorts yeah exactly so the yeah. part of this is going to be me learning how to do some of the content and and I, i'm 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 going to tell you right now, I, I really enjoyed the Worthington book games. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried a couple of others that I 
wasn't overly excited about, so I'm not even going to put them on the channel. I'm not going to talk about them. It's just some things your your taste and others aren't. But yours and that list of all of those games, yeah, I think you're going to start seeing quite a bit of your stuff on my channel because this looks so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, SOE Lysander, before we end, let me just yeah. comment on that. Sure. Um, we actually had uh, the Blue Tweezers was talking mm -hmm. about his experience with it. He cannot seem to finish a mission without getting shot out of the sky or crashed uh, in weather or not found the target and so forth. That game teaches you how to fly covert night operations as a real pilot. Wow. If you approach it like you approach a war game where you're just moving counters and rolling dice and taking the chances and hell bent for leather to get to the target and win, mm -hmm. you are going to lose every time. Every time. I'm not saying he's doing that. He may also be having a bad string of luck. Yeah. But if you plan ahead, as a pilot does, plan carefully, plan your flight, fly your plan, and when it goes wrong, say, you know what? I can try this again tomorrow night. Turn around and fly home. Do it like a real pilot would. You encounter thunderstorms. Why are you driving through that? Right. There's a line of storms ahead. This isn't looking good. I'm coming back. I'm, I'm not going to risk this. There's thunderstorms over the landing zone. Are you really going to land in heavy rain in a farmer's muddy field? You know, I can't even take off. So landing, I don't even know how to do yet. <laughs> <laughs> so that game. Actually, in fact, aircraft games, maybe I need to play more tank games. <laughs> maybe <laughs> you might be a natural tanker. The SOE Lysander teaches you to think like a pilot. Very cool. And what I found fascinating is Blue Tweezers is battling his way through, not being able to complete the missions. And I went ahead and I opened the book back up and I played three missions to see using as I fly it as a, you know, a highly experienced pilot. Mm -hmm. As I would fly it had I been a combat pilot in World War II assigned to night covert operations. Which the last thing you want to do is engage somebody. You're going to do everything you can to avoid being engaged, avoid right. being shot at, flying around. You're going to be, you want a little bit of weather, but not too much weather because the enemy is going to have a harder time finding you if there's enough right. cloud cover. So you want to take advantage of that. The weather charts work very predictably. You can see where you're going in the weather. It's going to worsen or get better. Generally, it's not quite for sure. And you're going to be thinking about all of those things as you play the mission out. And you've got skill chits that you apply, a limited number of them. Uh, and there are three types. You've got pilotage chits. I'm going to apply those on my takeoffs and landings to make sure I get down. You know? <laughs> um, you've got sixth sense chits. Okay. Sensing ahead danger. I'm going to apply those and use those. If I get lost, I'm going to use my sixth sense chits to refine myself or to use them to adjust the modifiers on key dice rolls. So you yeah. want to husband these skill chits and use them where they're where they're really needed to complete the mission. And so you're all the time thinking about how to do this, how to fly most conservatively to avoid risk and to get through and get the job done and fly home without incident. Now, and if you approach it as a as a combat charge into the fight, you will not make it home. That makes sense because it's not a combat game. Right. It is, you are recreating what it's like to fly covert operations. Okay. You don't want to be spotted. So, so it teaches you to think like that pilot. I haven't looked through the book other than to just glance at, the, again, color, um, looks good quality, easy to read, just some of the basic stuff. Uh, I'm assuming this is probably something I can also do kind of an extended series on with four or five episodes of when I get into the mission. So. But I'm going to set that aside. I'm not going to go after this because I have a really bad habit of shiny object syndrome. So mm -hmm. we're going to set that aside. I'm going to focus on MAG-23 uh, for the next uh, at least seven or eight weeks. Okay. That's going to be my good. focus. So, okay. Anyway, so I, I want to thank you for coming on, spending the time with me, um, showing me your game, talking about some of the other things. Like I said, we'll have you on the other show. Um, I want to get through this. 
Uh, and while I do that, man, we'll talk. We'll talk. <clears throat> How long are we making decisions? The rules are actually written phase by phase. So you don't have much skipping around to do. You can actually page through the rules the first time you play it. You'll, you'll see, you know, it's like you, you go to, uh, to, so I'm going to I'm I'm go to bed tonight. I'm going to get up tomorrow. I have a couple of tasks to do, and then I'm going to sit down and play yep. and try to get yeah, in a number of uh, turns so I can at least play maybe a week, maybe push two weeks just to, so I can get a lot of the things to come up. That way, if I have any questions, I can reach out to you. Right. So you'd go, you know, when you get to the takeoff phase, you go to, you can go to takeoff, Exodus 5 2, and you read through that much and follow the instructions. Perfect. The rest of this here is an example of actual play. Okay. Of that section. So each phase, the first time you play it, you might just want to page through the book on these. Read it through, do that phase, go to the next phase, citing JP Force. Read it through. Here's the example. Yep. Roll those dice, play it through. Then on to combat operations. Read That's what I'll do this weekend. Because like I said, I, I want to make sure I do a good job of playing it correctly, even if I don't play and make smart decisions. Because that's always a fun story anyway. I mean, um, I would... When you've had a disaster of a day. You you have consumed 10 fuel points. Yeah, which is uh, three more than I wanted to. You wanted to have 20 fuel used in five days, was it? Well, I three days. Three days, 20 well, About fuel. seven a day. And you've already used 10, and you didn't even get a single airplane in the air. No. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I, I, did I really use all that fuel? I mean, really those, those aircraft were sitting there. They still had fuel in the tanks. When that plane flips over off to the side of the runway, that fuel drains out of those tanks. Oh, it is, sure it is gone. No, you can't put that in the rules. That's crazy. <laughs> Anyway, Thomas, I'm going to let you go. Um, thank you so much. This has been a, a, two hours very well spent, and I am so excited to get this started. Uh, and I'll definitely, you know, I, I, I'll stay in touch with you if, if, if something's going on or I got questions while I'm in the middle of this. I'll just reach out to you, and fingers crossed I can I can make it to, what was it, the 11th? <laughs> that's, what it, that's why I said 11 weeks because it's October 11th. Yeah, it's October 11th. Um, you yeah. got seven and a half weeks ahead. Your day by day gameplay begins in on Monday. Monday. Yeah. Wow. Good yeah. luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> hey, hey, have a happy Saturday. I guess it's Thank technically you. Saturday for me as well now. Okay, very good. All, All right. right. We'll see Later, you. Later, boss. All right. Oh, oh, you know what? I have to like get my mouse and do my ending. I know we're talking like we're already off the air. That's fine, though. Oh no, um, I 